In this video, I go through the seven things you should look at when determining a master's degree for breaking into the data science field. I recently made a video about how I chose my own master's degree to get into data science. I recommend watching that after you finish this video. In it, I mentioned that I didn't feel comfortable recommending specific schools or paths based on just my own personal experience. I still don't feel comfortable recommending specific schools, but I can do a lot better job of telling you the seven things that you should probably look into when deciding an individual program. There might just also be a special bonus eighth tip for international students if you stay till the end. For this video, I asked a few people, including our guest, Tina Huang, Hi. how they would evaluate a grad program if they were going back again. With this additional insight, I thought it was fair to make this video. I also wanna make it abundantly clear that I don't think you need a master's degree to break into the data science field. But if you're gonna pursue one, this is the advice that I have. So the first thing that you should probably consider is what you will be learning. Most of these schools have curriculum readily available online. You should look at this to see if it matches up with what you hear about being used in industry. You can figure out what's being used in industry by looking at job postings, by doing some light analysis there. You can take the highlights of some of these courses and show them to a data science friend of yours or a data science community. Ask these people if they think that learning this curriculum could make you effective on the job. The relevant things here are the programming languages and the production tools that you're using. If you see a data science course using MATLAB or SPSS, you probably don't want to take it. These are things that people don't really use in practice. They're used a lot in research, and it shows that the school is probably not up to date with what is on the cutting edge. I also wanted to add that the goal of your degree should not be just to learn what is fashionable. You want a degree that gives you a strong foundation that can actually withstand the insane speed of progression in technology. So if you want something trendy and fast, a boot camp or maybe something online could be more suitable to your needs. Now, the second thing that you should take into consideration is the job placements from the programs you're applying to. Most people are pursuing these different degrees to break into a data science or data analyst role. And you should check to see first if the program has exit stats for each of the graduating classes. I have some examples linked in the description below. Word of advice, if they don't have stats or they're hard to find, I would consider this as a huge red flag because good programs love to brag about their alumni. Next, go on LinkedIn and find some of the alumni. What types of jobs do they have? Would you like to be in one of those positions? And yes, this might require some work. Work? Yes, Tina, work. These schools cost a considerable amount of money and I think putting just a little bit extra elbow grease is, is worthwhile. You can also reach out to some of these people uh, that you found on LinkedIn and ask about their experience. I highly recommend doing this. I have people doing this and asking about this experience for me at DePaul all the time. And I'm generally happy to answer those, you know, of course, as long as the people are respectful of my time, et cetera. Now, the third thing you should evaluate is the class diversity and flexibility. Something that was particularly important to me was my ability to choose my own adventure, so to say. If I was interested in a kind of fringe machine learning topic, I wanted to be able to take a course on it. One of my favorite classes was related to Monte Carlo simulation, and I haven't seen too many programs that offer one of those. This can work the other direction as well. If you clearly know what you want to study, you want to make sure that a lot of courses in the specific area are offered in the program. For example, if you know you want to do computer vision, don't just go to a school offering only one course in it. I also chose a program that had a lot of electives. If you know what you want, this is really good. On the other hand, if you struggle to figure out what to study, more acquired courses might not be a bad idea. Some master's programs also have specializations. If you're unsure of the classes that would be the best combination for what you want, these pre-late tracks may be a good option to consider. The fourth thing that you should look into is if you want to take this program online or in person. With the world kind of landscape changing right now, this becomes a lot more relevant. I personally took a program that offered both in-person and online courses, and going forward, I think having the flexibility to work online is a real benefit. I think it's very important to be introspective about this decision. Are you the type of person that is able to study at home on your own devices, 
or does having some structure around your learning help you to be a better student? Some people just do far better in class. I had to start in class and was able to slowly transition to online learning over time. I'm sure the other people in my classes are pretty grateful that I made this decision. Well, actually, Professor... Now, the fifth constraint is time. How long will this degree take you? There are a few one-year programs, but most are around two years. Also, can you pursue this degree part-time? Again, this is all about how you personally want to handle this. I worked and did my degree full-time. Possibly not my best idea, but it definitely had its advantages. I'm a big believer that having a job to begin with and bringing in money while you're paying for school is really valuable. And I was willing to work a lot harder, you know, have some pretty long weeks in order to do that. I did my degree full time and didn't work. But this is also because of my non-American citizen status, which we'll have a special section on later in the video. Okay, now on to the sixth thing. And that's research and internship opportunities while you're at school. This is related to thing two, which was exit opportunities. I've stressed this an absurd amount in my other videos, but arguably the most important thing you can do while in school is to accumulate real work experience. You can do this through either internships or research opportunities. You should ask the programs if they offer co-ops, internship placement, or clear research pathways. I did an internship, but not research, so I think Tina can talk a little bit more on the research front here. This may seem obvious, but may not be top of mind for a lot of people. If you want to potentially explore research, make sure that your program has these opportunities. If you're taking a course-based master's, some programs might not have research opportunities and such, or the path to landing a research position is harder, so the priority is usually given to undergrads and PhDs. Now the last and not least non-bonus feature that you should consider is cost. There are generally no guarantees about your success out of these programs, at least that I know of, and you might be paying quite a bit of money without the promise of real opportunities afterwards. I recommend trying to get scholarships, grants, or anything that can help you pay for these if you can. Also, geographically, schools vary greatly in price, and you might want to explore these options as much as possible. I personally went into quite a lot of student debt to pursue my degrees, and I'm really fortunate to be able to find positions that help me to cover the monthly payments that I have to make. Honestly, pretty much all of the money that I make from YouTube is either going back into the channel or helping me pay off my student debt. Going into debt to pursue education is something that requires a lot of consideration, and I personally don't recommend doing that. Thing eight. This is a special section for international people. Is the program OPT slash STEM extension friendly? If you're international like me, this is a really big one, if not the biggest one. I assume most of you also don't want to get kicked out of the country. So you want a program and a school that is both OPT friendly and a degree that qualifies for STEM extension. To vet this out, I recommend confirming with the admissions people that the degree qualifies for STEM extension and also see what proportion of students is international and what job those students land specifically. You want a program and school that's international student friendly I can actually help you go through the OPT process. Unfortunately, international students have the added stress of also worrying about their visa status, as many companies may not even interview you. You want to minimize that as much as possible because recruiting itself is stressful enough. Thank you everyone so much for tuning in. And remember that the program you choose should be very specific to your individual interests and your situation. There's no one size approach to choosing a school. Definitely make sure to check out Tina's channel as well just like how I made a video about how I chose my master's in computer science degree, she also made one on how she chose her degree specifically. Those videos should show up on the screen over here, I'm pretty sure. So good luck on your selection process and on your data science journey.